How many times have you heard me say, play with your cat, play with your cat, play with your cat? Probably a million times at this point if you've been following me at all for any amount of time. At the end of the day, as many times as I say, play with your cat, I hear, my cat won't play. So today, you lose your excuse because today I'm gonna teach you how to get your cat to play because I, I wanna make sure you hear me. All cats will play. Is it gonna look different from cat to cat? Absolutely, and I think one of the things we'll talk about is get to know your cat. Once you know your cat, and we're talking about stimulation level, we're talking about age, and also just types of toys, types of prey. What are they interested in? And then we can exploit what they're interested in to get play done. And also, what does successful play look like anyway? Covering all that, so put on your safety belts because you're about to see a whole bunch of jumping and moving around, and you don't have to go anywhere you know I'm gonna do all the sweating so play with your cat but my cat won't play play with your cat let's go now your cat might not be the, the most like sort of get up and go cat and we're gonna address that but just so you know our special guest stars today are those cats just so you can see this right now I got a toy hanging out of my back pocket and I've got little Joni hanging by my pants so not to say that your cat is going to be that cat for the sake of demonstration, these guys make it a little easy. If you just look down there, you see somebody who's ready to play. So when we talk about types of cats, I do group them into cats that are like cars. You got like a sports car, like a Maserati, and you've got a Model T. With the Maserati, just turn the key and they're gone, they're off, you know? But with the Model T, you gotta crank. You just gotta keep cranking, you gotta keep cranking. And we do that sometimes with things like laser pointers, where we'll just get them that engine going, and then we transition to an interactive toy. But sometimes you just gotta have patience, guys. You gotta keep cranking and cranking. Don't let them fake you out. If it takes 10 minutes, so be it. Keep cranking. One of the first things that you wanna do when it comes to play, I don't wanna treat your cat as just and every cat, nor should you. There are things that cat with a capital C should go for, but obviously that's not gonna be your cat. So you gotta know who they are. And one of those things are, does your cat prefer to play with something that approximates a mouse or a cricket, or something that approximates uh, a moth or a bird? Some cats are actually afraid of a toy that's flying up in the air like that, so you just gotta take that moment and figure out who your cat is. Also, I mean, when we're talking about problem solving with play, it's good to know, is your cat uh, a wallflower? We're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but the idea that your cat is just so scared they won't come out and, and explore the world, play helps with that. Are you dealing with intercat aggression because you've got a bully on your hands? We could take the, the steam out of the balloon with that. Play solves so many issues or helps to that, you're, that you call me about. So that's why we're doing this. One of the goals of play is cat mojo, the very basic of everything I teach. And what is mojo? Well, in the human terms, mojo is that sense of just confidence, not confidence that comes from cockiness. It's that inner confidence that bubbles up when you know what you're on this planet to do. And for cats, it's hunting, Catch and killing, that's part of what has kept them going through this whole timeline of ours. And also confident ownership of territory and nothing, and I mean nothing, helps to accomplish getting your cat mojo-fied, turning them into what I call the mojito cat, than play. Play is it, you guys, play is it. Play is not just play, human beings. Play is role play for you. So that means you're not a human with a stick and a feather. You are a bird, you are a moth, you are a lizard, you are a fly, you are a mouse, you are prey. And if you play as prey, then your cats will play as predators. Not because I'm just trying to pimp a product here. This is my toy, the Air Prey toy. I play with it because I make it and because I love it. This is the toy that we're going to be really relying on today. There is definitely a place in life for what we call remote toys or independent toys, which are, you know, little balls or crinkles or stuffed mice or whatever it is. But for our purposes here, when I talk about getting your cat to play, that means play in a, in a concerted, 
way that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And that, my dear friends, has to be with you. Interactive play. You are on one end of the toy, hopefully your cat's on the other end of the toy, and that way we can predict the hunt, catch, kill, eat cycle here and get your cat truly tired. So, to my point, let's go to it. In this case, because clearly these guys are into the concept of the moth at the ceiling, we gotta play into that. We then have to play into at what point are we like, okay, they, they're activated, they're in, they're in, they're completely going nuts, and then this thing hits the floor. Now they are so prepped that they're gonna jump on that thing. Okay, I'm running away, I'm running away, I'm running away, I'm running away. Oh, don't catch me, don't catch me. No, 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 I don't wanna die, I don't wanna die. I'm making these guys crazy but the next stop here is we're gonna we've gone fly 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 now we hit the ground now the cats may jump on me they may not but we got to be ready for both things so let me show you flying 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 everybody's watching me fly everybody's watching me fly down okay so now Brucey decides he's gonna be first in this is what I love you guys I gotta wait for him to drop it Brucey was the first in and he puts the, the prey in his mouth and then if you heard, you couldn't hear him from here, but he's doing a little low growl. And then he's looking for that place, that safe place to go and, you know, where, where am I gonna take my prey and eat my prey? And he's surrounded by other cats who could threaten that instinct he has. So what we do is we then take the toy and we allow them to, to just run off a little bit with it, keep slack in the line and just go with them. He'll get to that point where he'll find that place, he'll settle in, look around, and then he's going to drop it, either because he wants to eat it at that point or whether he's being a cat sadist and he's like, are you dead? Are you, or are you pretending? And that's when you're off to the races again, the moth goes back to the ceiling. I am working in a pretty constrained place here, but I'm gonna do something that you don't do. If you're saying that your cat doesn't play, I can bet you you don't do this. Ready? Oh my, I'm making a terrible assumption right now. Terrible, horrible assumption. But this is you. My cat won't play, Jackson. My cat won't play. Wait a minute, let me get even better. This is you. My cat won't play, Jackson. I don't know, I've tried everything under the sun. Oh, the Knicks won. Where the heck is my pizza? This is how I want you to play. Before you tell me you, your cat won't play, this is what I want you to do. Ready? Watch me. Come on, you guys. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Where are we, where are we, where are we? What, 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 what? What, 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 what? Moving, 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 moving. You see, I'm even bending. I'm getting down a little bit. I'm going up a little bit. I am part of this thing. I am part of this. If you are not running around your house like an idiot, if you're not like me at the moment and getting a little winded because I'm completely out of shape, then you're not doing your job, playmate. You're just not doing your job. You got stairs in your house? Use your stairs. Even if you gotta stand at the bottom of the stairs and drag it back down again, use your stairs, use heights, use whatever you got at your disposal to get your cats tired. So what are we seeing here? What we're seeing here is that time and again, Brucey wins. You guys in multi-cat households, I am sure you've seen this. And now we're gonna talk about it. The difference between social play and actual play. There is definitely a place in your household where all cats get to get together with you and we swing it around and, and everybody chases and does whatever, but you're always going to see something happen. You're going to see one cat dominate play, which in this case is Brucey, and then your cats who tend to be a little wallflowery, those cats are going to do just what we just saw Bramble do. Uh, who is a wallflower? Well, they sort of stick to the walls, they stick under things, they're afraid of a lot of stimuli in your house, they don't explore much on their own, they don't really consider their space as safe. That's a wallflower, a scaredy cat, and play is invaluable to taking a wallflower, getting them off the wall, and exploring their best life. And in this case, if we always play this way, Bramble is always gonna wind up like that, which is off to the side, watching everybody else play, and not having his mojo addressed. 
So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna finish up with some social play here. Each cat is gonna have their own playtime. There is so much benefit to that. And I know that you feel guilty about that, those of you in multi-cat households, because you think, but everybody should get a chance to play, and if I lock somebody in a room, they're gonna be so sad. We're talking about 10 minutes out of their lives. It's not a big deal. And at the end of the day, everyone's gonna get to play. And, and you don't want your wallflower. I mean, honestly, what is going to turn Bramble into his most confident mojito self? Not sitting around watching everybody else play and getting scared every time they jump. No, it's through this, through him learning how to be his raw cat. So we have to just, everybody else gets to be put away for a second, it's Bramble's turn. Everyone gets put away for a second, it's now Brucey's turn to just get all that energy out of him, and then Joni gets her turn. I know you're saying to yourself, is your heart made of stone, Mr. Galaxy? You're gonna take this gorgeous little cute kitten who all she wants out of this world is to play, and you're gonna put her away? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do, so hang tight. I know, I know. I'm a Grinch. You're a mean one, Mr. Jackson. Okay, so here we go. I just want you to realize that with a wallflower, and Bramble can be, he's not a straight up wallflower, but he can be, that these moves where we just have him go through the sequence where he captures and kills. Now, what I'm gonna do, my goal is to get him the closest to the middle of the room as I can because this is about instilling confidence. This isn't necessarily just about exercise. Okay, so Bramble just went from hiding behind a guitar when Joni and Brucey were out to this, which is play. Play is play, whether it's 100 miles an hour in a three-story jump or following a feather around and getting that, that raw cat activated, you know? Both of those things are totally valid. And with this boy, this is about confidence, you guys. Look at this. Okay, we have a little jump here. Seeing what he does, he does. He's not like Brucey grabbing the feather and walking off. Bramble's playing with the string. It's all good. We're just gonna start the, the, the sequence again. And I, I just, I really just wanna, I wanna highlight this again. I need to highlight this again. That each cat's play needs are different from other cats. So as we're seeing with Joni and Brucey, they're just crazy. They just wanna jump and run and chase and whatever. When it comes to Bramble, it's about that tendency he has in times of high energy to retreat. So we can teach him that in those times, there's actually a really great reward that comes from coming forward and not just hiding. And then look at this, look at my boy. I'm very proud of you right now. I'm very proud of you. One of the things to remember is there's gonna be different phases of play. Now again, you guys, I know that you're gonna be like, my cat doesn't jump like that, Jackson. I have a six-year-old cat. Don't stress, I will get to you in a second. But there's different phases of play. Right now, he just wants to jump. One of the hints I'm gonna give you, here's a hint for the day when we're talking about jumping, don't forget, prey moves away. Prey moves away. Only the dumbest mouse in the world is going to run into the mouth of your cat. So prey moves away, we do it unpredictably, but at this point, it's just making him jump. So here's my little tip about jumping, because everybody wants to see their cat jump. It's the tick-tockiest thing you can possibly do, slow motion cat flying in the air. But what you do is away, and then when you come back toward him, you fly over their head. As such, here we go. I'm going away, I'm going away. I'm going away, I'm going away. I'm going away, I'm going away. Now I'm gonna go up, and I'm gonna go up. There it is, and up, and away, and up. Now, I wanna mix it up. It's not all about the air. See, now watch him, right here. See, now I get to do my little scooch -a scooch move. Scooch, scooch, look at that body. This is how prey works, you guys. Slow, allowing him to do his little hunty hunty thing. I'm gonna come back around, and as soon as he comes at me, I'm off, man. Remember, cats are built for speed and not distance. 
So let me take a second to introduce the concept that uh, I, I swear by when it comes to cats and play. It's called boil and simmer. You know, the recipe sort of instruction that first bring it to a boil and then let it simmer, you know, let the flavors come out. I, we can only go so far with that comparison, but with cats, it's about their energy level and remembering that cats are not necessarily meant to just run around the house for 20 minutes straight, unless they're these guys that are running around for 20 minutes straight, but that's because they're kittens. Cats are built for speed and not distance. And as such, we want to get into the concept of boil and simmer. We just saw that Brucey has gotten to the point where he is getting worn down. So he goes down like this. He was panting a little bit. We give him about two or three minutes to just do what? do what a cat does. They go, they hunt, they stalk. They're like, ah, oh, I found my prey. Run, 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 jump, jump, jump. Oh, butterfly, butterfly. And then I either missed you or I didn't miss you. And if I missed you, I'm gonna get down. I'm gonna reset this little hunter body and get ready for the next one. So in Boil and Simmer, we wait for him to get boiled and then we let him simmer when he tells us he's getting kind of tired, heavy breathing, lying like this. And just FYI, a panting cat isn't necessarily a, a bad thing at all. It's just if they pant for more than a couple of minutes, then you know that you've overdone it. But here, look, see, he's finding this nice cool spot on the floor. He's down. Now, is that to say that he won't play again? We can probably boil one more time. Um, but we're at a point right now where the, the boil happens after a minute. So we can call it a day. So now that we've gotten the hunt and the catch, the kill done, now it's time to eat. So I've got food ready for these guys, which I encourage you to do. Know that that's how this thing ends. I mean, when you go to create rituals in your house, having play lead into food is just a surefire bet. Time to eat, you guys, come on. Ready? Come on, let's eat. Come on, you guys. Over here, over here. Come on, buddy, over here. Come on, my love. Over here, there we go. And there you have it. That is the end of the sequence. Hunt, catch, kill, eat. Now we get into groom and sleep, rinse and repeat. That's the life of your cat. I know that seemed like a lot, but we've covered the very basics of why your cat won't play and what will help them to play, why you should play, and the rest. I mean, so whether it's boil and simmer, whether it is knowing who your cat is and knowing the basic techniques, whether it's about your job, role playing, staying active, remember, praise, interact. It's, it's as much about bonding as it is about anything else. So don't forget, it's not about just work, it's about play too. Play is play sometimes. It's not just play therapy or work, but all of these techniques are gonna help you not only get the best out of your cat and, and help solve problems, but like I said, it's gonna make life between the two of you that much sweeter. All right, you guys, if you wanna see very specific variations on what I did today, whether your cat does X, Y, Z, but doesn't do A, B, C, that's all good. I wanna hear it. That's what the comments are for. And uh, in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because the subscriptions let you know, oh, Jackson's got another play video coming out. I get to watch him run around like an idiot. Great, now you get to run around like an idiot. Jackson, my cat won't play, my cat won't play. All right, light, love, and mojo to you. Meow.